Hi everyone, my name is Terry, and welcome to Friday Fact Day. This is my little corner of the internet where I get to talk about the work I do in fitness, feminism, and philosophy. And today's fact is... Agnotology Part 3, Why Ignorance? So, before I proceed with the rest of this topic, I want to point out that I've already done two Friday Fact Day uh, pieces on agnotology, just the basic introduction of it, and then a little bit of the history of how it developed. This third part, I want to tell you about why we choose to study ignorance and what that word really means in the agnotology context. As I've mentioned in some of the other videos before now, Agnotology is the study of ignorance, and in a sense, it is the opposite of epistemology. Now, epistemology has been around for a very long time, and it's the study of knowledge. It's about questions about how we know. Do we know what we know? Do you know? Do I know? We don't know. In that sense, agnotology is the opposite because it's the study of what we don't know. But more importantly, it's basically looking at what we don't know and why we don't know it. There's information out there. Why have certain people been kept from accessing that information? Or why has misinformation or disinformation been spread? And misinformation and disinformation are two slightly different things. That's a whole other video for later. So when I say I study ignorance, quite often I get a rather emotional response from people. Sometimes people just go, oh, that's, you can't say that word. Or they take offense to it. And for very good reason, because of course we have used ignorance or calling somebody ignorant or an ignoramus or things like that for many, many, many years as an insult. And it's very important to understand if you're embarking on any work on agnotology, that when we say ignorance, it's a state of being. It is not an insult to anybody and it's not ever meant to be used that way. In fact, if agnotology is done well, it works in the opposite way. It justifies why somebody doesn't know something. It's not about insulting somebody and calling them ignorant. It's not about anybody having a low IQ. It's not about lacking in cognitive ability or desire to understand things. That's not what we mean by ignorance in this case. What we're really looking at is who is gatekeeping the knowledge and why are certain people being, being kept out of it? Or why are certain areas of knowledge not recognized as knowledge? And a great example of that is uh, for many, many years, things that women did for our own health were considered old wives tales, or even if you go far back enough in history, witchcraft. Another great example of whose information is being gatekept in agnotology is from Dr. Londa Schiebinger in the book Agnotology, The Making and Unmaking of Ignorance. And she does an entire historical review of how the local medicinal plant knowledge of Afro-Caribbean women was deliberately suppressed by white male slave owners. And they were particularly suppressing information about abortifacient plants, which as you can imagine, are plants that cause an abortion. Because, of course, slave owners didn't want black women to have control of their own reproduction. So that knowledge got pushed out and stamped down to the point where it is what we now call the lost realm area of agnotology. That's lost information and lost knowledge. But it's lost deliberately because of racism and sexism that propelled certain people to want to profit off of the people who knew information that was going to affect the bottom line. Don't take it as an insult. Take it as an opportunity to look at the powers that be that are pulling the strings behind the green curtain and look at why and where knowledge gets suppressed. So as I always say, lift heavy, fight the patriarchy, and I'll see you next Friday.